I started growing food because I got really sick in 2020 and it wasn't due to what everyone else was dealing with at that time. I was born um, with what they call a reflux of the kidney and it causes um, rather than the waste to come out, it causes it to go back up, much like um, an acid reflux if, of your stomach. And I've struggled with um, my health and my kidneys my whole life. <laughs> Look at this iris coming into bloom. You know, initially I thought it was gonna be black because before they opened up, they looked black. But I thought to myself, I don't remember buying a black iris. <laughs> I was in the hospital um, dealing with kidney issues and I suffered a medical error by my doctors and um, what was supposed to be a day surgery wound up being a full week in the hospital in the ICU um, trying to survive. She keeps running by me. <laughs> this Vitex is blooming too. So beautiful. Peace family. So today I'm going to be working in our new greenhouse. This greenhouse is um, 25 feet long and we ordered it from Amazon. I can definitely drop a link below if anyone is interested. So far, it's been holding up pretty good. We've had a few heavy rainstorms, um, but we really won't know, you know, just how good it is in these Texas hurricane storm, you know, winds um, until we go through it, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, what I need to do is break up the ground under the, um, greenhouse I thought I planned out where super was gonna place it so that it would you know line up with my rows that are already in here and because this is the in-ground garden but I miscalculated that so um, I've got to go in and sort of just like make new rows for this area as well as um, this row kind of cut leading out here these rows need to get readjusted if you will so that's what we'll be doing today family is continuing to prep this in-ground garden including the greenhouse area for our next round of seedlings that are going to be going in all right so i am like in a sauna <laughs> um i went ahead and broke up the area closest to <laughs> closest to the the um what is that what kind of bugs in here i've never seen um oh that's good for my plants but anyway i went ahead and broke up the area closest to the greenhouse wall so i'm gonna have a row there and um Obviously, this will be my walkway. Um, yeah, I don't think I want... The greenhouse, you're, you're, you're on my journey, okay? To figuring it out. <laughs> the greenhouse is 10 feet wide. Oh my goodness. I gotta put some of those little silver things that I like in here. It's um, it's a lot of bugs in here. Didn't really notice when I was working. Let me step out, get some airflow too. Whew. Get some of the fresh air. So the greenhouse is 10 feet wide. Um, so if I do a row, 
I could do a row a foot wide and then I would need at least I think about a foot of a walkway I'm trying to look at what I got currently well it's not really even um, I would say I could fit a row that's a foot, a walkway that's a foot, and another row that's a foot. <clears throat> three feet here, and then that's about three feet, this middle part, that's fixed. And then on the other side here, the same thing, a foot, a row, a walkway, excuse me, and then another foot for a row. It's not an exact science, but um, obviously I want to maximize the space for this area. So I've got to go get me some water and sit down for a second and then I will pick this back up. All right, family, so I am back at it. Um, I basically went through, like I said, and made that row closest to the greenhouse wall clear. I'm trying to make sure I pull any weeds that I can see. Next, what I'm going to do is go through and lay um, my eggs, the old eggs that I have. Um, this is the way I did it before I knew people dropped eggs, like in the actual planting hole. Um, we had a bunch of just uh, kitchen <laughs> scraps and stuff that um, I was planning to compost and I couldn't quite figure out the whole composting thing. Or maybe I just was impatient, I don't know. So what I started doing was collecting the kitchen scraps and the eggs and everything and burying them deep beneath my planting space. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna move the soil to the side, make sort of like a furrow. I'm gonna go through and drop the eggs. Um, and then I also, uh, then I'll cover that. And then I also will use the, um, the Solomon's Gold fertilizer on top of the native soil because I know that my native soil is lacking in calcium. And so that Solomon's Gold mix has the gypsum in it, which really helps with the calcium deficiency. Um, and then on top of that, I will add the store-bought compost, the big box compost, and then on top of that, a final layer of um, bag soil, like the nice soil that I want to plant directly in. All right, so um, I'm debating if I want to show all of that. I'll just see. Um, I'll just see how far my battery gets me. <laughs> So I share the fact that, um, you know, I didn't grow up growing food or have someone teach me how to grow food, but that I had a passion and a desire to begin to grow food when I got sick because um, I just really, it was just really pressed upon my spirit. Like, what if something happened to me? What would I be? leaving for my family mainly super and I our kids what would be what would we be leaving for our kids if I were to leave this earth and the house that we were living in in Houston um, it was just a typical suburban you know neighborhood the house was on top of each other um, we had plenty of space in the house um, you know it was you know a nice decent sized house um, but if I were unable to go to work or make an income, we would lose that house. Um, same thing if Super, if Super was unable to, you know, go to work for whatever reason and contribute to the household, you know, what position would we be in? And then not only that, if there was 
some type of intervention where like people didn't have to pay for their house note for a period of time how would we eat what would, what would we eat you know how would we survive even if we had a shelter how would we um, make it you know day to day and those questions had never really been anything that I thought about I never thought about the what-ifs um, I had never thought about like things not being the way they have always been you know and it was enough to where at the same time super was having those same thoughts of just like what are we doing you know we're working these corporate jobs we're both in management positions you know we're both successful if you will but what are we doing you know what are we doing with with the opportunities that we had for the um, stewardship and the cultivation of our future and I don't think we had ever really deeply thought about that <clears throat> we are not a typical mainstream couple we're not very worldly um, you know we don't we don't participate in the things that most people participate in um, like holidays and birthdays and you know any other you know worldly type of celebration so you know we find ourselves um, being set apart in a lot of things but when it came to that aspect we were very much in line with the culture very much in line with the mainstream and when we when we really like were honest about that we had to make a change we had to um, wake up and so we started searching Ashley super started searching and he found this homestead um, it wasn't a homestead then it was an elderly couple that um, were going into their retirement years and they were going to be um, living with their children and they were selling this property that from what I can tell from the deed it's been in their family for years years and years and years <clears throat> and they hadn't done much to the land or either they settled all of those things in the process to sell um, there are structures on the property that led us to think that maybe they raised animals at some point <clears throat> excuse me but there weren't any animals when we purchased this place um, so when we purchased it you know it was the home and the outbuildings and you know we really were drawn to this place for several reasons and I have um, a series that I'm working on now that's gonna explain uh, what we looked for when we were looking for a place this wasn't the first place that we found <laughs> probably the 10th um, but there were multiple things that you know as we were really just considering what our future looked like and what we wanted to be able to do that um, really uh, shaped you know our criteria for finding a place so anyway <laughs> Um, you know that is why we're living this lifestyle it is hard because we both still work full-time jobs I am fortunate enough to work for the most part from home um, I do have you know ebbs and flows where there's more time I get to do that and there's less time I get to do that um, but I'm fortunate to have you know flexibility uh, to be able to work from home on, on some days <clears throat> Excuse me there's some pollen or something's in the air stuck in my throat sorry for all that clear in my throat <laughs> but um, you know just consider I am in no position to preach to anyone I am I am in no lofty um, <laughs> you know stage to be able to look down upon anyone and, and condemn anyone I am just here to allow you guys to have a glimpse into the window of what it is to be a new homesteader, of what it is to be someone that's considering things differently than they have ever considered them. We are city folks. I'm from Houston, Texas. 
Seeker is from Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> by way of Trinidad. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're city folks. We didn't grow up this lifestyle. So everything we're doing is literally, it is new to us. Um, and I'm loving the journey. I feel blessed and honored to be a steward of this property, um, to learn the land. Um, there's a YouTuber, her name is uh, Jessica, and she's with uh, the Roots and Refuge Farm, and she says, turn your waiting room into a classroom. And when I heard that years ago, when, you know, when I first heard her say that, it resonated with me because it is so true. Like, oftentimes we, we dread the waiting, we dread the learning, we dread the process, but that is how you get to be proficient. That is how you get to be better than you were the previous time you tried. As you just keep trying, you keep learning. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, I count it a blessing to be able to speak to this little box and then upload this to all of you that would desire to hear our story and follow our journey. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep plowing this ground so I can get it prepared for when my seedlings are ready to go in. Actually, I have some tomatoes that are gonna go on this row. I wanna use this um, crossbar here to tie up the tomatoes. Um, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. So I do have some tomato starts that are like, ooh, they are struggling because they're in those little cups and I've just been trying to water them and keep them alive until I can get them in here. Um, all right, so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> hot in here. I need to bring a thermometer in here. I'm listening to one of Lead Farmer 73's live, so that's what's in the background. So this is Solomon's Gold. It's a mixture of a lot of different minerals to amend the soil. And this is my second year using this. Um, I only used it on, I think, two rows last year to try to just like, um, hold on guys. Ooh. Come over here in the shade part. Um, I used it last year because the first year I had horrible blossom end rot. Tomatoes, melons, peppers, the squash, everything had blossom end rot. So I used it last year on my tomato row. Not one tomato had blossom end rot. I did not use it on tomato row this year. And there was a whole thought process behind it. We're gonna see. I have been amending 
my rows, you know, with other compost and blood and bone meal and gypsum and we'll see how they do this year. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add it to the um, greenhouse garden. Um, and it's called Solomon's Gold. You can go to David the Goods website. I'll put his website on the screen for the um, ingredients and the recipe. I, I decide to yeah. start all this hard work. <gasps> you would think what the hell it is, is so wrong? humid in I'm here. I'm gonna tell you why. Because I'm living my dream. I know who I am. I don't know. I don't know about this. <laughs> it's not too much difference between. I think I'm breaking up the wrong side of the greenhouse. Other than that, I'm the oh, same there's a all day long. spider on my microphone. Right. Get off of there. <laughs> I do not want to take him in the house. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Yahweh. The sun went behind the clouds. Oh, we. All right, family, so um, I'll go through this second row that you just saw my nephew son uh, till up for me and pull out any of the large um, weed. They have the large weed roots. I pull them and I put them into a bucket and I will either make a compost tea with that or put them into the compost. It just really depends on what I feel like. So, all right, peace family. So I'm back out here in the greenhouse. It's the next morning. Um, my nephew, son, and I did get um, this first row completed and we began the second row. Today, I've got to mix up some more of the Solomon's Gold, like I mentioned yesterday. Um, I was hoping to do that yesterday, but after I went in and showered and helped in the kitchen, that was that. <laughs> so, it is a holiday weekend this weekend. Um, I do have to still work um, on the holiday, but, um, you know, Super's home, everybody's home, so hopefully I can get a little help. We'll see. <laughs> Um, anyway, of course, as always, it's early morning um, because we do farming 
five to nine before the nine to five. Um, and uh, anyway, what I'm gonna do today is try to go ahead and get some tomatoes in this first row. The tomatoes that I have are struggling, okay? They are struggling because they have been in those either little grow cup, like the little starter cup, seedling cups, or, you know, the little uh, solo red cup. So anyway, I do feel pretty confident that once I get them in the ground, give them some water, they should recover. I do have some string here because what I want to do is trellis Close them to that pole here. So let's get going. These are the yellow tomatillos that I'm putting to the side. I want to kind of keep those together. <clears throat> I really like to keep all of the varieties together, but it has not been. I've been able to do that this season. Look, this one already has a tomatillo on it. This one has a little cherry tomato already on it. <laughs> they are fighting. This is that queen of the night. This is the new release from uh, Baker Creek. All right, family, so I'm just gonna go ahead, get these in the ground get the holes fertilized and everything and then I'll bring you back to show you uh, the final results. 